Roadshow Podcast. Yeah, you, if you're going to be a student in one thing, you have to be a student in everything. And I learned that real quick. And I think everybody does. If you if you if you're trying to go for something, you need to be a student. Like it's all well and good like just trying to be a sponge or whatever, you know, to all of the information, but being a student isn't just being, you know, uh, uh, a recipient of the information. It's to ask questions, to be curious, to go deeper into into what you're learning. I think that's the most important part about being a student is being curious. Like, what does this lead to? Why are we learning this? You know, that's important. Absolutely. And I, I believe in trying to be a forever student. I've been listening to this book on Stoicism by, oh, I forgot his name, but he writes a lot of Stoic books. About, um, um, Ryan Holiday? That's exactly it. Yeah. And I'm listening to his book at the moment, Ego's Your Enemy, and he was talking about- Oh, fantastic book. You should always be a student because- the moment that you put yourself out of not needing to know anymore, then all of a sudden you start developing this ego that I don't need any more information. Mm -hmm. But it's really by being forever a student is how you become great. And I, I, I've always been doing all of these things, but I didn't realize like there's an actual like answer to why that is the best way of doing it. And books like that have really been helping me a lot because I often stress about things that I can't control. And stoicism is about not worrying about the things that you can't control. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, right? Just yeah, being a stoic is like one of the things that I have. I have had many conversations with uh, one of my I, when I used to sell real estate. I had a running buddy, um, and now he's he's just sold his no. He shut down his crypto cu- uh, currency that he was creating. Um, wild story. I'll tell you after the podcast. But um, he comes in. And he always has like this fresh perspective because he lives in these different countries. Like he will move every six months and he'll learn something about something stoic about the, the way the people live in that country. And he's always building, he's a nomad, a digital nomad. That's what they call him. Um, his name's Samuel McIntyre. The guy is fucking phenomenal with the way he thinks. Um, and yeah, the last podcast that we did, Oh, it wasn't even a podcast. We went and got a shisha afterwards. Um, <laughs> and uh, he was asking me, because uh, I had 11 surgeries last year. It was a rough time in my yeah, life. Um, and I I was listening to doctors. And he was like, how long before you um, stopped listening to authority and started listening to yourself? I was like, about 10 surgeries. And he was like, and how quickly did you recover after you started listening to yourself? I was like, immediately. And he's like, yeah, who's a dum dum? <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's amazing. I was actually going to ask you about that because I recall seeing about how you had that autoimmune disease, mm. and you've just worked out your own way, of bypassing everything, yeah, and just doing it your own and fixing it. It yeah. must have felt so like obviously the whole lead up to that scenario was insane, but it must have been such a big relief to not only do it but do it your way. Well, I don't, I don't know if you're like a big conspiracy head or whatnot. Um, but I like nobody in my entire family has any sign of this immune autoimmune disease. Mm. <clears throat> I get stomach pains in 2022. Mm. Um, I go into the hospital. They say nothing, nothing's wrong. I, I was taking Tonga Ali at that time, which is a yeah. testosterone increasing route from Indonesia. Um, and, they they put it down to oh well you must have taken a bad batch of that you've got a stomach issue just stop taking it see what happens i was like okay let me try that and then i go home i stop taking it i start doing the carnivore diet the elimination diet doesn't let my body react to anything for a long time so i was i was sweet for like six months um and then the start of 2023 after a breakup and there was a lot of other stresses in my life Mm. my my um uh my stomach issues started coming back and I was like, what the fuck is this? And it started really, really hurting. And then I would like be on the toilet for like 11 hours a day and nothing coming out. I was like completely constipated. Mm. Um, and then I like this one day I got up and the blood was just fucking all over the toilet bowl. And I was like, that can't be fucking good. Fuck. So I went into hospital and my colon, which this is fucking disgusting, but, but this is, it was growing into my muscles. It was right. it's what's known as fistulating. So if you get an ulcer and uh, it creates a pus pool on the outside of the organ, it will find its own way to drain. So it'll literally go through your muscle, through to your Damn. skin. 
um, and it'll just continue draining. Um, so it's called fistulating, um, uh, the fistulating Crohn's disease or fistulating ulcer- ulcerative yep. colitis. Um, but the doctors were, I was like, oh, so, so is it ulcerative colitis or is it Crohn's disease? Because mm. Crohn's disease is uh, from tongue to anus yep. inflammation. Right. But they were like, no, you've only got it in this one section, but it'll only fistulate if it's Crohn's. So we don't know what it is. Right. And I, that made me think, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm. So I went through a number of these um, uh, incision and drainages. So they would cut me open mm. and drain out the fluid that was in there because I had like four of these going off. Um, and I had my first vaccine in 2022. Four weeks later, I had my first stomach pain. Right. My second vaccine was in... No, no, that was my last vaccine. Um, have, you, do you, have you ever heard of a cytostorm? I've, I've done this research now. A cytostorm is basically when you... When you have a spike protein or something that um, triggers it, the, an in, immune response. So yep. when you had the COVID jab, yep. um, your immune system was flooded with spike protein, which basically was like a, they say, um, is increasing your immunity. But it basically just tells your immune system to switch the fuck on. Mm, mm. And your immune systems are like, why? Mm. Like, what's going on? Like, why do we need to turn on the immune system? The immune system started attacking me. So my, my own immune system started attacking me. And it did it through um, mucus flesh or mucus fl- of mucus lining. On, on the inside of the colon, there's a mucus lining. And that's so shit doesn't get stuck to the fucking colon, right? Mm. Um, now, I used to be a bodybuilder. I'll preface this with I used to be a bodybuilder and I, I know a lot about compounds that are illegal and I know compounds that are, are completely legal but just not talked about because you can't patent them because they are naturally occurring. Now, pentadecapeptide BPC-157, which is body protection compound 157, is one of the best ways you can recover from muscle inju- injuries, tears or anything. If you have, say, a tear in your shoulder or in your bicep or in your pectoral you inject it locally into that spot mm. and within two weeks it's completely gone and i was thinking like after having like six of these surgeries incision and drainage incision and drainage it was just like ongoing like when does this end oh they're like oh we'll, we'll put you on um exflix uh, infliximab exfliximab or something like that which is a thirty thousand dollar they were trying to hype up how much it was going to cost the doc the, the surgeons and to give me this and they were like it's thirty thousand dollars a year but the government pays for it you should really do it and i was like am i a dollar figure like i heard a doctor one time and it was in the middle of the night say to a trainee nurse um she she asked him uh is this patient going in for hospital and he goes no he's not sick enough yet Hmm. what and he goes like I remember distinctly the the thought that I had was there's there's a there's a need for a patient to be sick so they can make money. You can't make somebody you can't make money off someone who's dead or healthy, right? They need to be sick. And when he said that, I was like, oh shit. So it took me a while to listen to myself. But this one time, I was with my current partner laying on the bed, and we were, I had just had like this severe attack. So when the the fistula breaches skin it's like pushing through nerves and it's the most horrific like morphine doesn't even mask it just a question to interrupt you there were you getting like internal bleeding from yeah yeah oh geez yeah i mean i've seen my my current partner she went into hospital for internal bleeding it was like um she had some like um ovarian cyst burst and that happens quite frequently with women but it's not often that they bleed internally Mm -hmm. i've never seen somebody in so much pain like like that so i understand like i can imagine what you were going through and that was going on for like what how many months or years uh, about about 16 months jesus christ so um does your partner have endometriosis no it's not related it was just yeah all right lucky lucky because i there has been so just before I continue, there has mm. been an increase of 450% of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis cases or endometriosis, which is the, um, I like to think of it, this is the same thing. It's it's literally the uterus fistulating yeah, out into the surrounding yeah. areas. Yeah. And if you're listening to this, please, for the love of fucking Christ, 
go and buy some BPC 157, you will fucking save your life. It's a mucus. So I did this. Um, I'll put the study up on the screen right fucking now. Mm. Um, and you'll read that they took 100 mi- uh, mice and 100 humans that had ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. They, they, they gave something to the rats or the mice to give them this. They gave the BPC-157 to all 200 subjects. I th- I, no, there was actually 400 subjects and one was uh, one group of 100 mice and 100 humans got BP- BPC-157 and double-blind placebo study. They gave a placebo to the other 200 um, subjects. Yep. 100%, 100%, 200 units was a success rate. Damn. For BP-157. What was the disease that it was uh, used So ulcerating mucus lining flesh, which is like like inside the colon, inside the uterus, all of these. Their version of that, essentially. Yeah, so BPC-157 is a peptide that um, is mainly used in just bodybuilding. Mm. So I I had this shit in my fucking fridge, dude. Mm. And I was like, I wonder, like, let me just Google and see if there's a PDF of of like some use case where a scientist has tried uh, BPC-157 on like Crohn's disease mm. or ulcerative colitis or something like that. And it was the first fucking one that came up and it was right. in Dagestan. And it, like Russians were like, fuck yeah, let's try this. Well, Dagestanians. Um, they, were, they were like, let's try this. And then they did it. And I was, I had this like, fuck you moment. Mm. I was like, Fuck you. You're trying to turn my immune system off. Mm. Wait, if you just cured the ulcers and got rid of the ulcers, I'd, I'd heal. Mm. You wouldn't have had to cut me open all these times. What you were trying, they were trying to say, your body is fistulating because your immune system's trying to get rid of the pus. But it's not. It was the pus trying to get out. Like mm. it was, my body was trying to dispel the pus. Yeah. It wasn't my immune system that was doing Mm. that. You're trying to turn that off. They gave me... um, What's that fucking shit called? They gave me an immune suppressant. I can't remember what it was. Some kind of steroid thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a steroid um, that uh, turned off my immune system. And then I started getting infections. Like there was a part of my immune system that was stopping the infection. Was it Solon 1 or something? Sol 1 or something? It started with an S. Yeah, S-O-L-O... And even, some shit like that. Yeah, I, I actually took that for not something as hectic as that. It was more something that I um, thought what I was dealing with was, was extreme allergies. I'll, I'll let you finish your story first because I've got another whole thing. Yeah, know? let's go, let's go. Yeah. Um, and but, okay, so I started taking this stuff. Uh, I bought an oral compound and I started injecting locally. Within two weeks, the wounds had healed up, which were my previous surgery wounds that were not healing up. They were just like, they just healed up instantly which was like whoa so i decided to change hospitals i went to a new surgeon and i said look um you might have the file already of what i've been through but i just want a colonoscopy i just want you to check and like they booked me for a month down the line and i fucking took this shit like it was candy i was eating it every day i went through 90 caps of it and was 500 milligrams per cap um Oh, micrograms per cap. And so I was having maybe like 500 micrograms locally every day. And then, because it was so severe, I was just trying to do as much as I could. And I went through 90 caps after this, after these 45 days or whatever. And we went and did a colonoscopy. And the surgeon came out with the results and it was Dr. Jacobs at Murdoch um, Hospital. Uh, shout out to that dude. You're a fucking legend. Um, he goes, dude, you don't have ulcerative colitis. You don't have Crohn's. You have like some of the best looking colon tissue that I've seen. And I was like, I just fucking cured Crohn's disease. 